Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a modern office building. This office building features seven floors, employee parking, every single floor has a lobby exactly like this one, stairwells exactly like this one, and possibly most importantly, every single floor has an office exactly like this one. We have a secretary area, a manager's office, a meeting room, and a bunch of cubes. Oh, plus there's a coffee shop on the top floor. If you enjoy this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it helps me and the channel out very, very much. And that's pretty much it. Please try and watch as much of the video as possible as that helps out loads and loads too. But without any further ado, let's get started. This is the amount of space required to make your modern office building a 27 by 44 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground which I would always recommend making if you are planning out your world. It can only help. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. And now that we have all of our stuff, we can get started. So step one, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid if you've made it and count backwards one two three four five six seven and then right by two one two we're gonna start off by placing four smooth quartz on top of each other one two three four then place two upside down smooth quartz stairs going right one two smooth quartz block two stair quartz block Two stair, quartz block, two stair, quartz block, two stair, quartz block. Now, we should have, just before we go any further, five sets of those two stairs. And once we have done that, we can extend down all of those quartz blocks to the ground so we can kind of make a little bit of framework out of all of the blocks that we've just made and these are basically just going to be the bottom windows of the office building so they'll end up looking a little something like this we want to take the end of of the structure that we've just made so where we were just building and we connected it down and we want to place a row of birch planks in front of it we then want to take the top block here and we want to extend it to the right by one using birch stairs we then want to place birch planks on the end extend the birch planks backwards by three one two three and then we want to extend that block to the right by four using gray concrete one two three four we want to extend the first gray concrete down to the ground and the last gray concrete down to the ground we then want to continue extending to the right by four so well actually by three this time so one two three and then we can join that third block down to the ground and then once more, we only we only have to do it one more time. One, two, three, and then join that last block to the ground like this. And whilst we are here, I would just like to clean things up a little bit. So I want to extend the birch planks down to the ground here. So I just want to get those extended down to the ground. I want to add glass to the majority of this. So everywhere that I said there would be a window, which is basically, I mean, just about everywhere that we have left a gap is in fact a window. So we can fill all of this in just using blue glass paint, like so. And once we have filled in that left part, we want to do the same here. Now, it's a little bit different on the front. So the middle area, the middle gap is going to be a door. And it's kind of up to you how you want to make the door. Like a common door that I like to use whenever a door is going to be glass. I usually like half fill the area and stick an end rod there. So on where the glass is and it just looks like a door that one would actually like pull open. So what I also want to do is I want to in front of the top of the row of grey concrete. I want to place a row of upside down birch wood stairs. 
and then grab the smooth quartz slabs and I'm going to extend these slabs forwards until they overhang the front of the build by one row. So that's just this little birch wood part here. I'm then going to convert the front right hand corner of this area into a solid quartz block and join it down to the ground using black stone wall. And there you go, I mean that's majoritively the front of the building. We now have to move on to the sides and we have to do those, although it's a lot easier to do pretty much the entire rest of the building. So, on the right side of the build, we are going to take the top corner here and we're going to extend it backwards by six using grey concrete. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Join that down to the ground. We're then going to extend an additional three, one, two, three, join down to the ground. An additional three, one, two, three, join it down to the ground. And then there will be three rows. So one, two, three, just like this. So the front of this wants to be filled in. So this relatively large portion here wants to be filled in. And then these two windows want to be filled in using glass pane. So the side of the build will look a little something like this. Then when we come to the back of the build here, we want to add a bit more detail as well. So we want to start off by extending the entire back across by six rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can just take every single one of these like this. Then we want to extend the top across by three. One, two, three, and then we can join that down. We can fill this in using blue glass pane. Perfect. Then we want to add a row of birch to the right of this. Extend forwards. Place an upside down birch wood stair to the right. Plank on the end. Extend down. Add a row of smooth quartz block behind this. And then fill the front of this in using birch, or rather using blue glass pane. We want to extend the quartz area across by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, well, every, every single one of these blocks. So just like that. Here, here. Then we're going to take the top and extend it to the right by three. One, two, three. And then join it down. Going to fill this in using blue stained glass pane. And then finally, another row of six will do it. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And hopefully, if everything has went to plan, if it hasn't went to plan, something has went severely wrong, <laughs> then we can join the front and the back together just using a solid row of block of quartz because there's not really room for windows on this side in particular. So... All in all, I mean, I, I, I can show you from a couple of different angles. I mean, this is what it wants to look like from the top and then from the front, of course. And I mean, the sides are pretty boring in comparison to uh, in comparison to the front. But this is essentially as hard as the build gets, ladies and gentlemen, because the next part of this is going to be very, very repetitive. Although we're going to sort out the rest of the outside before we start turning this into what essentially could be a skyscraper if you wanted it to be. Okay, so we are going to start work on the outside of the build now. And to do that, we're going to need a few different things. So we'll need some white concrete, we'll need yellow carpet, lime terracotta, birch fence, oak leaves, flowers, I like the azure bluettes. Uh, some smooth stone, maybe some red concrete, although that's that might be for a little bit later on. And some light grey concrete, question mark, there's got to be a reason that we've got it. So, now that we have all of this stuff, we can get started. I'm going to begin by placing a set of flowers in front of the left side of the building. So this is specifically in front of the set of windows that we have right here. In front of the flowers specifically, I'm going to dig two rows, and in front of where the birch sticks out, I'm going to dig out two rows to make a rectangle, and I'm going to stick lime terracotta. In front of this, I'm going to dig out rows, and I'm going to extend all the way to the boundary so that is the grid for those of you that haven't made the grid 
you poor souls. You want to dig out four rows directly in front of the building and simply just two rows to the left also. So I'm just going to dig just to the left of the flowers. We can sort the rest of it out later because this is also going to be dependent. This building is actually perfect to stick next to stuff because on the left of the building, like it can quite easily adjoin something because there's no detail on it. So um, it, it depends where you're going to stick this. We'll talk about it more later. So anyway, we're going to take the smooth stone area and we're going to dig all the way out to where we have the black wall. So this is going to be... I mean, this lines up with the side of the building, essentially. So um, once we've done this, we have to make a bit of a pathway up the right side of the building as well. This is a tad more important. It's not necessary to have a car park for the office, but it seems to me that a super fancy modern office building would have a car park. It would also seem to me that it'd have some of those spaces that are reserved for fancy high up people in the company. Mr. Johnson and such. You know him. Very, he's, you know, he's very well versed in business and he wears a suit and has most of his hair, but not all of it. But anyway, we're going to dig two rows to the right of the building, pretty much extending all the way to the back. Not really necessary to dig any rows out of the back of the building, although we are going to be later just to give the building a little bit of breathing room. But actually, um, we may as well do this now because as we are digging backwards, it would be rather quick just to kind of like, I might place some flowers along the back. You know where we like naturally have like grass here? I think flowers across the back would just be just fine. And then we'll just have one row of smooth stone if you do want to navigate around the building. But once more, you don't even need any space back here. So if you wanted to back this onto something, like onto another build, or if, if you were if you didn't care if it was accessible from the back, then this this is all meaningless, the left side and the, the back here. But it just makes it look a little bit nicer for those of you that want to traverse around. So now that we have done that, the next thing that we're going to do is set up a little bit more of a parking structure and that begins by placing some more smooth stone. So we're going to dig a row of seven to the right of the front of the smooth stone area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it wants to be four rows deep. So that's, we've already got one, two, three, four, just like this. So seven by four rectangular area, just like this. And all of this is going to be smooth stone, like so. I'm realizing that the light gray concrete, I've, I've realized what it's for, but we don't need it now. I want to swap the light gray concrete with gray concrete because we're going to dig three rows, one, two, three, to the right of all of this, just like so. And then the last two rows, I'm going to make smooth stone. So the... I want to make... The little rectangular shape that we have here, I want to add another two rows behind it, but it's going to be lime terracotta. So, this is important because I want to plant some fake trees here. It's birchwood fence on the left, the right, and the middle. And then we want to have leaves on top of the fence. I'm choosing to place two leaves on top of each fence like this. And also over here on the left, basically the scheme is this. If we start on the left, it's basically like fence, gap or two, fence, gap or two, fence, so on and so forth. You guys get the idea. So eventually you won't be able to place any more fence because you will simply have a gap of two. So that's that's all we're doing. And if you wanted to, I think that you can actually place these even... No, you can't because it'd be a gap of three on the left. But I actually don't care that it's a little bit uneven. Um... I'm actually quite happy with how that looks. So, yeah, I think that it looks quite nice with this. The little bit of greenery, I think, really does add something. Car parking spaces. Actually, no, first of all, first of all, we want to take the smooth stone area at the back here, and we want to add two rows of smooth stone across the back and extending forwards. So, like this. So, this is going to help to... What would be the words? It's going to help to box in, to frame, might be a better word, the car park area. So, we're going to simply just add two rows of smooth stone here. And then at the back, just like we've got at the front, literally the same, we want to have two, well not literally the same actually, we want to have two rows of lime terracotta like this. 
and we want to have a set of trees. So the trees are going to be on this back row, and it's again, fence, gap of two, fence, gap of two, fence, gap of two, fence, gap of two. And you will find that this spreads rather evenly across the back and the, the trees just line up nicely. So the end result is this. Now we want to make car park spaces. The car parking spaces are as long as the terracotta that we have. So as long as the lime terracotta. It's made out of white concrete. I believe... Have I got a bit of better picture of this? Yes, the car parking spaces are three rows apart. So if you were to dig little gaps of three or to leave little gaps of three and place white concrete in the third row, then this is how your car parking spaces would look. I'm also going to be adding some yellow carpet to them. And I'll also be filling the entire area in with grey. We also, by the way, the, majoritively, once that has been done, we have majoritively completed most of the office building, or at least in terms of the outside and in terms of structure. The office building is surprisingly incredibly easy to make, or at least I hope that I have made it quite easy. Um, once you've got that first layer done, as we have, you're going to notice that every single other layer, every single other layer um, comes rather easy after that. So, um, we also have to do, I think we have to do the floor, really. Yeah, we probably have to make the, we might make the floor inside, although... Um, that seems like something that can be done later, actually, because it's just going to be a bunch of red concrete. I'm using red concrete. You could even use red uh, wool as well, because it looks a little bit more like carpet, but that's up to you. I, I like the texture of concrete, uh, although, again, wool wool's nice as well. You could even go with something a bit more colourless. I consider like uh, the black, white, and grey to be a little bit colourless, meaning it kind of just goes with anything. It's not quite, not literally colourless, but you know, it just kind of like vibes with everything. Um, we have just about filled in all of the, yeah, all of the, all of that. That's looking good, isn't it? I like how it looks. It just looks so clean. It's perfect. So now that we have done that, I want to, underneath all of the windows, this might even be a job for later, but underneath all of the windows, where's the quartz? Um, I'm going to fill in the windows using, like, underneath the front windows, quartz, um, where we have this birch window here. You might guess it. I'm going to play some birch. Eh. Let's just climb that. There we go. Underneath these grey windows, I already have this. I'm going to have grey. Um, in between the doorway, this will of course be the flooring material, which is going to be um, red concrete. Underneath these windows, also grey. Underneath this back window, also grey. Underneath this window, birch. And finally, underneath this window, some quartz. So, I mean, it's hard to see it all in one go, but you can see it just looks a lot better this way. What else do we need to do? We don't... Honestly, we don't really need to do too much more other than begin to build up the height of the building. So, as I've mentioned, ad nauseum, which means too much in Latin, we are going to... Let's, let's grab everything that I know that we will need. So, we will need the smooth quartz block, smooth quartz stairs, birch planks, birch stairs, blue stained glass pane, we'll need the quartz slabs, Polished black stone wall, that might be it. I think that we've actually nailed it. If you want to install and mark out floors, then red concrete is perfect for you. But it's actually quite obvious. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to mark this particular part of the video, video out. Whatever this time is, I'm sure that I'll put on the screen, and I might even include it in the description and all sorts of that. This is the part where we are going to make the next floor of the building. This part is repeatable. So, as many times as you need to follow this upcoming part, feel free to do so. But this is how we are going to build the height of the building. This part is repeatable. That's the last thing I'll say.
So, I'm going to mark out where the floors of the building are going to go. It goes basically like just above the glass line is where the next floor of the office building is going to go. It's fairly obvious though, I mean, we've literally got on the outside like this big giant overhanging thing. Like it's obvious where the next, where the next floor of the building would go. So, the next question would be is how do you make the actual next floor? Let's start again on the front left hand corner of the office building. Building. We'll be going through this a little bit quickly because we've already done it once. We'll take the corner and extend it up by 4 using block of quartz. 1, 2, 3, 4. Place 2 upside down stairs to the right. 1, 2. Smooth quartz block. 2 stairs. Smooth quartz block. 2 stairs. Smooth quartz block. 2 stairs. Smooth quartz block. 2 stairs smooth quartz block. You'll notice that this lines up perfectly with the area below. And as such, you can literally connect it to the area below using the smooth quartz. We can fill in between these areas in using glass as these are also of course windows. And then we can continue to make the next part. I don't know why I feel like making this in parts like I'm doing now, whereas like Usually I like to kind of like go all the way around the building and add windows after, but it just feels right. In front of this row of smooth quartz, we're going to extend a row of birch. We want to place an upside down birch wood stair to the right of the top, extend a row of birch planks to meet it from the right side extending up, and then place three rows of birch behind this to line up on top of the birch that you could see were present on the previous layer. Fill the outside of this in, and you can see that this part of the building has now been extended upwards. We want to add, we're missing the material. I don't know how we missed the grey concrete, it's quite integral. To the right of this, we want to add a vertical row of grey concrete. We also want to do this where we also have the vertical rows of grey concrete just below us. They work out to be two rows apart from each other. We can join them together at the top like so, and then we can fill these in using some blue glass pane. So as we just move across, if you are using a controller like I am, I find it easier to just go like one way because it's just like, it feels so slow just moving around, but there we go. In front of the top of this, place a row of upside down birchwood stairs, followed by rows of smooth quartz slabs extending forwards until we overhang one row. Take the end corner of this, extend it down, convert it into a block, and place black stone wall extending from the two quartz layers like this. On the right side of the build, we want to copy the positioning of the windows. So if you just raise up the frame of the windows, just next to them like this, they want to be raised up by four rows to meet the front and the, well, the back of the build as well when we get there. Fill in the gaps that we have on the left and right. These are going to just be solid. And then we fill the top of them in using just gray concrete. Add some glass in between these windows. And this will be this. And there, you can see that, I mean, that's pretty much the front and the side of the building complete. It's looking pretty nice. On the back of the build, we can do the same. We simply build up the left and right side of the windows. We can join it together at the top if you'd prefer to do that first. We can fill this part of the wall in using grey, which just leaves the window hole here remaining. We then want to raise up the two rows of birch to the right of this to equal the height of the grey concrete. We then want to raise up the birch planks to the right. Add a row of smooth quartz block behind, just to, I don't know why I wanted to do this now, but I did. And then upside down birchwood stairs to join it together. Glass pane in between, and you can see, again, just adding to the previous layer. Probably the easiest way to do this, actually. We then want to simply raise up the remaining part of the back of the building. We'll ignore the window section, and in doing that, that kind of just like allows us to build the actual frame of the window just by adding an extra row of quartz at the top, some glass pane in between, and there you go. It's as easy as that. On the sides, we don't have anything on the sides, so we can just add a row of smooth quartz, and this is... that's, that's it. 
essentially. I mean, that's, that is an extra row of the office building. And hopefully, not too difficult to do. So, from that time that I said, all the way up until this time right here, is repeatable. We are going to be doing that, or at least I'm going to do that, three more times in total, and then I'll show you how you put an end to it, because the very top is different from the middle. So, let me add a few more layers off camera, and I'll be back once it's done. Cue the, like, the old school Batman music, the da -da 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 -da. Or is that Scooby-Doo? I can't remember. So I finished adding all of the additional floors. My particular office building has five floors in total, including the ground floor, or at least five office floors. What we have to do next, and I do want to just quickly, I've already made the ground floor red concrete and it's looking nice. I'm going to add in all of the individual floors before we tackle this, going all the way up to the top. So once we have added all of the floors in, because I just think it's it's just easy to add them in, and you guys know where they go. They go where the top of the window line is. It's, it should hopefully be quite obvious, I mean, just by taking a, a nice little peek here where each individual floor goes. Once that has been done, I will show you how to put a literal lid on this. So, now that we have added pretty much every single floor, you might notice that I've actually gotten to the top now. This is where things change a little bit. So, I'm going to connect the quartz part of the build together. And I'm, well, I'm going to connect the quartz part of the build together using quartz. So, pretty much everything kind of like left at the top of the office building. And then everything on the right, I am going to make red concrete. So, you guys will notice the reason for this when we actually do start making the top of this. But um, that is kind of going to be the left and right split that we're going to be deal dealing with. So, I just wanted to point that out just before you may have actually added in your own floors and like made the whole thing red concrete. Okay, so we are now at the point where we can put the top on our building. I don't want to make it sound as though it's like some really difficult thing to do because it's not, but it is different from the previous levels. So, once you are happy with the height of your building, and a five is a nice minimum by the way, I'd probably make it higher if you wanted to. But once you have hit the point where it's as high as you would like it to be, we are going to come to the birch section at the front of the build, and we are going to take the left side here and raise it up by four rows. One, two, three, four. Place an upside down birch wood stair to the right, with a row of birch wood planks that meets it on the right side. Stick some blue glass pane in the middle and extend all of the rows of birch planks backwards by three. You can see where you have to extend it to from the previous layer. We now want to also raise up the grey concrete part as well. That is the same as the previous layers. It is basically just rows of four grey concrete with two row separations joined together at the top. So just like this, to which we can then fill them in using blue glass paint. I feel as though that I should have already said this, but I, I guess hopefully it's obvious now. We are just raising up the right side of the building. Like, we're not doing anything new. We're just not extending up the left side of the building. So, what we now want to do now that we've done the front there, is we want to come onto the side, and we want to raise up all of the grey concrete parts, except for the windows. We'll just do left and right of them. And then that will frame the uh, the middle part for us so in raising up the left and right we can then raise up the middle and then we can join it together at the top just like this and we can stick some glass in these empty holes that we call windows and easy peasy same thing just here on the back as well so the gray concrete area will start by raising this up the left side then the right, join it together, blue glass in the empty gap, raise up the birch part, <laughs> not using that, we raise up the birch plank part on the left, right side, join together at the top, actually using an upside down stem, my bad, 
glass in between and then all we've got to do is connect the front and the back so i mean you can do this using either birch or you can use quartz it doesn't actually matter it's a personal preference sort of thing just like this and then we can join the front and the back together like here as well so just at the top feel free to include a window in the top of this we have to fill in the grey concrete part too. This part isn't accessible via stairs or anything like that. This is just like... Th this is the very tippity top of the building like no one can get up here. But that left side over there that we haven't extended up. I like the idea of that being a roof that you can actually walk on. So for whatever reason, I don't know why, but... It seemed to me that the building needed a logical end, so that's exactly what this is. I like this being a little bit taller. If you like, you can kind of separate things by placing a little row of quartz slabs just around the left side of the building here. Or it's the right side of the... No, right? Yeah, it's the left side of the building, and that, that kind of just, like, solidifies it like that. I don't know, it just makes it, like, it, it just looks a little bit more officially that side. And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that is your office building. You've nailed it. That's that's how it looks on the outside. But that's not all there is to it. We have to make some of the inside, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to gather up the materials that we already have, and I'm going to figure out exactly what we need so that we can start work. To start work on the inside, we're going to begin by using birch planks, grey concrete, light grey concrete, polished andesite stairs, birchwood stairs, oak doors, smooth quartz stairs, smooth quartz slabs, and some polished blackstone wall. So, let's head inside and we can get this started. First things first, and by the way, by the way, this is applicable to every single floor except the top one. We are going to be doing the exact same thing to every single floor except the top one. So, now that that is, you know, out the way. Actually, this is a good point. Just as earlier, I pointed out that this is the timestamp to come to if you want to do, like, the outside and keep repeating the floors. This is the timestamp to come to if you need a top-up on the interior, the repeating interior. So, from this time, and I'll point out the time afterwards, I'll leave these timestamps in the description um, just so that you're able to get back to these easy enough. But anyway, let's let's do this. So, we're going to begin by taking the birch plank area here next to these windows. We're going to extend it all the way back. So, the birch planks extending from the front to the back like this. On the back of the build, we want to have a double door. And I'm going to stick some birch wood stairs at the top of the double door here. So, you kind of get an idea. This is going to lead us into every single office building. So, this is going to be the office space that we have. What every single floor has also is elevators, lifts, as some might say. In front of this wall, at the top, we're going to place two on site stair, grey concrete, two stair, grey concrete. Drop the concretes down, place light grey concrete underneath, boom. Those are going to be elevators, or at least, you know, when we, when we do them properly, they'll be elevators. They're the beginnings of them. We also want to have a staircase. So, the staircase, very, very simple. Where we have our windows back here, we've got two windows. We want to come to the left side of this window and place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six grey concrete. And then we're going to have a double door. Boom. Then, we can simply place some grey concrete here to cover up this area. And this is the staircase. I mean, that's... That's where the staircase is going to be. The staircase is very simple. On the left side, we leave a gap of one between the door. And then we simply place a set of quartz stairs. Like this. Leading up onto the next floor. To which the next floor will also have an identical staircase that looks like this. I mean, give it a second here. 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 Perfect, to which we will have our one rose gap. And then another set of stairs. You guys get the idea, so on and so forth, until we eventually hit the top. 
It's also possible to have a strip of glass here too, which I, I, I didn't consider um, until just now. It'd be nice to have like a strip of glass to kind of like keep this a little bit bright because it's a little bit dark in here. Other than that, you could add like a lantern or something. But anyway, that's, that's the idea for the staircase. Every single floor has one, just as every single floor has a wall, just as every single floor has elevators. Something else that every single floor has is a counter space. Um, a lobby is the word, really. So, a lobby for the office. But so, On every single floor, you might not have an outward door like this, but you will have a window. And we want to take the framing next to the window here, and we want to place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six grey concrete lines up with the other framing. Leave a gap of one grey concrete. There we go. We can use a quartz stair whilst we have it to place a chair. I mean, that's a chair for the secretary or whomever to sit behind the desk and help people. Along this wall here, we want to have a sofa, a settee. It's basically this. It is just a set of four stairs just like this, corner popping out on each end, leave a gap of one and then two rows of smooth quartz slabs to act as a table. Extending out from the corner of table, corner of the table, we have a row of black wall like this, joining from the bottom to the top. And there you have it. That is mostly the lobby area. We just have to grab some other things. So next, we're going to be using some bookshelves, lanterns, flower pots, azure bluettes, any flower, weighted pressure plates, buttons, birch fence, green glazed terracotta, and paintings. So. The bookshelves, first of all. Basically, just to stack up behind the office area here, it looks like something. It looks like something that would belong to a secretary behind there. In the corner, I'm going to stick a lantern for a little bit of light, although it's not that necessary. A couple of flower pots in the corner. Flowers in the flower pots. I'm going to place a weighted pressure plate here, just in front of the seat. And I'm going to stick buttons on the elevators, or next to the elevator doors, so here on the grey concrete parts. I want to have some potted plants. These go between the elevators and the entrance to the office. It's basically just kind of like fake plants, really. So, fence, a couple of green terracottas on there. I specifically want... This painting here above the seat, I don't know why, I just like it. So, for the next part, we need just a few more materials. So, I'm going to grab them whilst, whilst I'm here, and uh, to finish this up, because we only need a few of them. Birch trap door, we need a loom, we need some light grey banners, we need two of them. And we need two just regular old grey dye. So, this is as easy as it gets. The birch trap door sits in front of the iron pressure plate like this to look like a computer. You can even use one of these stone buttons if you like to look like an extended mouse or, you know, plugged into the laptop or what have you. It gets as creative as you like, it doesn't really matter. Then, we're going to throw down the loom. Crack it open, and this is as easy as it gets. Such an easy banner design, but so useful. Light grey banner. Grey dye in there. Make one of them. Make make it so that a grey, a vertical grey row is on the right. With one of the banners. And the other, make it so a vertical grey row is on the left. Then, if we place these in this manner. On the doors, like this. Boom, they look like elevator doors. As easy as that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is how every single lobby is going to look. There is no exception unless you want to make it an exception. I would simply repeat this because office buildings are pretty much mostly repeatable, especially ones that are in multiple buildings. Of course, there's going to be variation, but I mean, it's up to you whether you want to do that. So, the next thing that we will be doing and this is going to require, the office itself is going to require a lot of the same materials that we have just used. But I'm going to, I'm going to clean everything up and I'm going to grab them and then I'll show you how to make every single office floor. 
back in a moment. Okay, I have grabbed all of the materials that I think that we're going to be needing to make every single office. You'll notice a lot of repeat materials. We're going to start off with light grey concrete, blue glass pane, smooth quartz block, bookshelves, birchwood stairs, smooth quartz stairs, lanterns, item frames, and weighted pressure plates. So, first of all, we're going to come all the way over to kind of like the entrance area of the office. Take this corner block and place one, two, three light grey concretes extending out. Extend this to the left by one, two, three, four, five, six. Lines up with the frame next to the wall. Now, we're going to simply place bookshelves, extending from the first block that we place. We're going to place one, two, three rows of book bookshelves. We're also going to do that to the right of the top of this window. We're going to place two. And then we are going to place just a couple of item frames on the counter space here. And we're also going to stick a weighted pressure plate here. All of this will become obvious a little bit later on. That's how we're going to leave it for now. And we're going to come to the left side of this window. So, to the left of this window, I want to take the top block and place one, two, three, four glass pane, extending left, and then a row of smooth quartz block extending down from the last blue glass pane. I'm going to also place another row of block of quartz, and I'm going to extend the first row of block of quartz into the actual outside wall of the office building. Just like this. And I'm also just going to fix the floor there. I want an entrance into this little... By the way, this is like an actual like office within an office. So like, there's going to be a load of cubes out here. And inside here is going to be, say, like the office manager or something like that. So... The entrance into like the actual office, uh, into the actual like manager's office here. We're just going to leave just one or two rows actually. We're just going to leave just a two row gap here. And we're going to fill the back of the office in with bookshelves just because it looks official. We're going to stick a chair back here. And we're going to make a table that is going to be out of... I guess we can kind of use some... I kind of want it to look a little bit different. So we'll make it out of like upside down birch stairs like this trailing off to the left. We'll stick a lantern on here, an item frame. We want to have another chair in here so that, you know, you can have one-on-ones with the uh, manager or what have you. And then I'm going to stick a weighted pressure plate in the corner here and we'll have a little computer. There's not really too much more room for anything else, but, I mean, it just has to be a nice little simple office. Over here, we want to add an extra row of smooth quartz blocks. So you can see that we've got a row of smooth quartz here. We want the same on the window that is parallel. We want to fill every row except this first row in here using blue glass pane. So like this. The top row, however, can be glue, blue glass pane like this. I almost said glue glass pane. <laughs> so hard. Um, like a tongue twister. So this wants to just be open. So inside here this is basically just a meeting room so i want to have a row of light gray concrete across here and i want to grab paintings brewing stand flower pot we'll need some light gray concrete again we'll be using the polished blackstone stairs and that that might be just about every and the lanterns and the item frames and stuff we can use so also i'd a material that we are going to be needing, by the way, but I, I guess I missed it. We're going to be needing birch trap doors a lot. So this area here is basically like, I'm imagining like a screen. A projector of some sort, if you will. Or maybe even a TV. It, it doesn't matter, but just something like that. I'm going to stick a brewing stand and some flower pots. And I'm going to make a table. So the table, I'm just going to leave a gap of two here. And then I'm going to have a row of light grey concrete that extends all the way across. I'm going to leave another gap of two. The table is going to be just two rows thick like this. And then I'm going to stick some polished blackstone stairs around the table. It doesn't really matter in what manner you do this. I want to have a bunch of lanterns. So I'm thinking a lantern on each end of the table will actually suffice. 
And then, on, on the table itself, just flower pots, item frames, closed laptops in the form of birch trap doors, and open laptops in the form of um, weighted pressure plates with birch trap doors flipped upwards. If you want to go that extra mile, stick a painting on the trap door, boom, easy peasy. And that is what a, a meeting room will look like. And by the way, whilst we do have paintings and all of that other fun stuff, we can also stick a painting on this wall here, so that we have a computer, just like this. So you can see what that side of the office looks like. In addition to this, again, we can have open laptops and such here as well. And, um, well, what else do we want to do? So inside the office, I mean, this is a good part of it. We'll finish that area in a sec, but we have cubicles. Cubicles aren't the nicest, thing, like, constructions in the world, but they're, they're basically this. If you start with this front window here and leave a gap of two, so one, two, place a light grey concrete and extend the light grey concrete across to make sure that you leave a gap of two between this window. So you've got a gap of two on the front, gap of two on the right, just a gap of one here. What we then want to do is make a series of cubicles. We take the middle block, which is this one, and we place a row of one, two, three light grey concrete and then extend left and right. One, two, three, left, and right. She'll be able to do this once more. One, two, three, left, and right. And then, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of up to you whether you think that that is too close. Like, it's possible that you might want to shift this um, one row forwards like this. Like, it, because it, it doesn't matter how many cubicles are in. I mean, you could even have bigger cubicles if you liked. So, like, some cubicles could be larger than the others. And, um, I mean, I suppose that, like, different members of the team... Like, I've never worked in an office, but I can imagine that, like, it's quite hierarch hierarchical? Is that a word? It's, it's like a hierarchy, meaning that, you know, there, there's, like, levels. Like, there, there's employees that are more valuable than the others, I assume. I don't know. So, it would make sense to me that perhaps people that have been with the company longer might possibly have bigger... Like, it, it would make sense if there were different styles of cube, now that I'm thinking about it. I might also be completely wrong. I've never worked in this environment. I don't know anything about it. But, um, I've... As you might have noticed, I've kind of, like, added a wall to the cubes as well and I'm going to add just a couple of lanterns along the top as well and that that will just keep things nice and bright let's make behind this desk area here and then we can kind of like look towards the cubes so behind this desk we're going to need what will we need we'll need polished blackstone slabs pots lanterns green glazed terracotta bamboo light gray shulker box uh, oh, and paintings as well. Where is it? My old pal, the painting. So, light grey shulker boxes, just below where we have these bookshelves. To the right of this, green glazed terracotta, flower pot on top, bamboo on top of that. Then I want to have a picture to the right of this. I specifically like the man in black. There we go. And then I'm going to have a row of three... <laughs> my bad. Um, three blackstone slabs like here. And then on this, a couple of flower pots, lantern, boom, easy peasy. It just looks like a nice, busy area. And then for these, so originally I started with the design of just a small, like, tiny little cubes. So forgive me if this doesn't come so quickly, but um, inside of each one of these cubes, I imagine there to be this. At the very least, a computer desk. So that can be anything. I mean, that can be slabs, or that can be stairs, or whatever. On the computer desk... Where, where is the... Oh, there it is. On the computer desk, of course, like a weighted pressure plate that acts as a keyboard, and then, like, a painting. Every single one of these desks, I'm imagining, you know, something. So it can be an item frame, it could be a pot, whatever it might be, and I'm imagining a chair. There you go. Like, box standard, easy peasy. However, I'm guessing, once more, I'm guessing that perhaps for somebody that's a bit more senior, you may get a little bit more leeway with what you, what you get away with in here. So maybe we'll have, like, you know, we'll have the computer setup, of course, and we'll have the flower bar. And then maybe in the corner, you get to have... This sounds so depressing. In the corner, you get to have a plant, you know? Maybe you get to have a poster, you know, 
Something like that. I don't know, maybe even a drinks machine if you want to. We don't have... Oh, we do have one of those on us. So, um, what about in this one, perhaps? So, <laughs> they allow you to have a machine to have drinks. So, we'll have a... We've been pretty lucky. Why does that keep going away the way to brush plate? So, we've been pretty lucky. I Or unfortunate that we keep getting the same... Uh, the same painting, but here and then maybe maybe we just have like a little bit of no that that, that almost looks like too much um, But we can have we can still have like a brewing machine Here, I mean it it wouldn't matter like if we did this I mean if we changed the setup to make it look a little bit more colorful like we could have this So it just looks a little bit comfier. It looks a little bit less sad. I don't know um, and then this one, this one's also a tiny one, so here. By the way, not to, if, if you do so happen to work in an office or what have you, you know, no offense, it just doesn't seem like my sort of deal. Like, um, maybe these cubes are, like, nice and, like, chilled out. Maybe it's kind of, like, cool to have, like, your own little space, but I don't know. I'd, <laughs> I'm just going back to the first Incredibles when, like, Mr. Incredibles working that insurance job and he's in, like, one of these tiny cubes and he barely fits in it. And that's what I'm imagining, but it might not be like that whatsoever, so... Now that we have kind of like this entire area, yeah, I mean, this is the office. I mean, it doesn't get much more complicated than this. Of course, you can have things like water coolers and stuff if you do so choose. I mean, if a simple water cooler would would be just like an upside down stair. And then I don't know if you can place tripwire hooks on. I actually think you can. I think you can place tripwire hooks for some reason on glass. I want to say, yeah, you can. So you you can have like a little water cooler here. If you find room for a printer, although that'd be difficult in here, then, you know, feel free to add like, say, a printer somewhere or something like that. But for the most part, this is what every single office is going to look like, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to do exactly that to every single floor. And once I've done that to every single floor, I'll show you what my plans are for the top floor as it is ever so slightly different. Oh, but it is worth mentioning again that that was the starting point, you know, where I pointed out, like, that's the timestamp to go to from here, and this is the end of that timestamp. So from all that way in between, if you're ever having trouble kind of figuring out what you're going to be doing to each individual floor, that's what you're going to be doing, exactly what we've just done right there. So uh, feel free to keep repeating that, repeat that part of the video as much times as as many times as you might need and uh, we'll continue on to the next part after I've just done that myself. I've got four more floors to do, I think. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the point where we have but one room left to complete. If you take a look behind me, it will seemingly look as though most of these floors are complete. However, I mean, if you look a little bit closer, I haven't done the cubes, but from the outside, it looks as though that every single floor has been done, which is perfect. Although the lobbies themselves have. So once you have reached this point in which you are satisfied with however many floors you may have decorated, once you have got to the point where you are tired of doing all of the repeated floors, we can now move on to the final floor, which is the top floor. Now, the top floor shares a lot of similarities with the previous floor. So, you'll notice that we've got elevators, we've got the plants, we've got this wall here, we've even got, like, a little bit of counter space. We have doors, this leads out onto the roof. Like, these are all things that this top floor has, but... It's a little bit different and that we are going to put a little coffee shop up here. That's all we're going to do. It, it seems appropriate. I wanted to put something up here. It doesn't make sense that there's a lobby up here. So a tiny little coffee shop is what we're going to do for the employees on break. That's all we're going to do. Feel free to chuck something else here if you like. So we're going to start off by using the smooth quartz stairs, red terracotta, item frames, buttons, cocoa, beans, brewing, stand trip, wire hooks, spruce trap door, and some flower parts. So... With this counter space here, I'm going to stick a couple of red terracottas just on this corner here, um, the grey concrete. I'm going to place upside down smooth quartz stairs extending all the way to the right. Leave a gap of two and then place another vertical row of red terracotta. I'm going to have a shelf that's going to be a couple of spruce trap doors and underneath said shelf a couple of flower bars. To the left here, a couple of brewing stands in between the red terracotta, trip by hooks above, Item frames on the left with cocoa beans, couple of buttons on the side of the brewing stands. 
Along this counter space, I'm simply going to place smooth quartz stairs, couple of parts, maybe an item frame. Those are not parts. Those are, those are trapdoors. And um, maybe even a weighted pressure plate just next to the till. Because I don't know why I do that. It just looks right. And there you go. E easy peasy. To make a separating barrier between this, kind of like a line to wait in. Some glass just in front of this so that you can, you know, walk around. Order your coffee, whatever. Thank you very much. See ya. Um, we're going to install a couple of tables. This is easy. This is basically just... Um, Stairs. I think that we can place them. No, okay. So yeah, the stairs. If we leave a gap of one, we can just have a set of stairs here. Scaffolding in front of stairs. Polished black stone stairs on the opposite side. Parts on the scaffolding. And then uh, feel free to put, say, I don't know, paintings. So paintings in between the stairs. So like this here, here. Uh, prob probably not that. Maybe something more akin to this. Um, feel free to hang... I don't have them on me, but I mean lanterns would be would be good because it is a little bit dark in here. So perhaps some lanterns hanging either above the tables. I mean, that's, that's certainly fine. Like above the tables will actually, I think, do it. You could even have one just like on the end of the counter space here and that'll probably provide enough light. And, and that's all I kind of want up here, just like a nice simple cafeteria for everybody. Everybody can come up here, everybody can get a coffee, and that's as, as simple as that. And, um, ladies and gentlemen, that's the build complete. There's nothing else to do, like the, the roofing, like this situation here, you might want to, like, um, add in a wall here, say. Um, probably not here, because it's just a window, and that, and that's it. I mean, I, I'm hoping that I've shown you how to make absolutely everything. I don't think that there is anything left to do with this build. Congratulations! So this is what your modern office building will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed making this as much as I have enjoyed designing and making this. This was honestly a lot of fun to do. Kind of hard, actually, but really, really fun. If you have enjoyed it, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me in the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing, clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, check out the card system, the description below, and at the top of the comment section for more. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.